with so many amazing full-size trucks on the market, why did I choose the Ram Power Wagon as my new full-size adventure vehicle? Well, in this video, my son and I are out here in the desert, and we're gonna take you along as we go tackle some trails, see how well this performs. We'll talk about all the specs and details of this truck. We're just gonna have a great time today, and we're so thankful you're joining us. Let's go hit the trails. The Ram Power Wagon is the heavy duty off-roader of the truck community and its heritage dates back to the 1940s and is well known for its big, tough, trail dominating capabilities. This 2020 model is the fifth generation of the modern Power Wagon and the off-road refinements and the modern interior amenities make this a highly sought after adventure vehicle for those looking for a full-size truck, a long range expedition rig, and a weekend trail adventure truck. I've had my eye on the Power Wagon for a while now and I'm looking forward to pushing this truck to its limits on the dirt, adding a few modifications that'll fit my needs, and sitting back and enjoying the ride on some long range overland adventures. I think this platform has a whole lot of potential. I love coming out here to the desert in the winter. This is just so beautiful. The temperature is perfect. And what a great vehicle to have here out on these wide open trails. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad. And today what I wanna do is just spend some time talking about the Power Wagon that I've now had for about three weeks and I've put just over 2,600 miles on and off road. And there's some things that I love about this truck. There's a couple of criticisms I have, but I just wanna talk about the specifics right now, some of the details of this truck that make it such an off-road beast. Let's start by talking about the massive size of this truck. So as many of you know, I traded in my Jeep Gladiator for the Ram Power Wagon 2500. And this thing is such a big truck, starting with just the height of it. I'm six foot two and this truck is taller than me. It stands 80.9 inches off the dealer showroom floor. And then I threw on some 35s and it made it even a little bit taller, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But the important thing about the height is this thing will not fit in my garage. So that means any work that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be, well, it's gonna be out on the driveway. Now the length of this truck, and I'm comparing this to my Gladiator because that's where I'm coming from, it's 20 inches longer and the wheelbase is a foot longer and it's definitely wider. So I'm just getting used to manhandling a bigger truck off-road. But the great thing about the Power Wagon is it's kind of a gladiator on steroids. It's got the suspension, it's got the lockers, it's got all the cool features to make it an off-road beast. Now, it's not going to have the payload capacity as a regular uh, 2500 heavy duty truck that's got a diesel. It doesn't have the towing capacity. So there's a little bit of compromise to have this off-road capability. Let's hop to the front. I'm gonna talk about some of the specifics that come with this thing. And we'll talk about suspension and we'll get into a little more specifics. 
Now this power wagon is equipped with some nice little luxury features that I am learning to really love. But let's start by talking just about the massive grill and hood here. It's taken a little bit of getting used to driving on and off road, knowing where your line is and the turning radius on this. Well, let's face it, it's not that great. But the cool thing is, is that there is a front facing camera. So when you are in a parking lot or you're out here in the desert and you've got some obstacles, it's nice to be able to turn that on and see what's going Going on in front of you so that's something that I think for this truck is gonna get a lot of use also up here there are some front sensors that are like rear parking sensors but for the front and I got to tell you I've been using those a lot especially when I'm pulling into like the grocery store knowing where the front end is is those are very very helpful I'm glad to have those so what separates the Ram power wagon from the other heavy-duty trucks is that it comes with a winch ready to go built in now so it's got a bumper and a winch plate and a worn 12,000 pound Xeon S winch that's huge because if you buy another truck that means you have to upgrade a bumper you've got to get a winch plate and then you've got to buy a winch and those winches are not cheap so that is super awesome that it comes with that it's very cool you've also got uh, your connection up here to hook up which is very convenient you've got some great uh, recovery points right in the front but then down here you've got this plastic wind deflector and uh, that's for gas mileage that's probably going to come off here in this near future whether i want it to or not uh, that plastic probably just won't make it uh, but it is nice that i have this steel bumper with the winch that's one thing i don't have to worry about i love the look of the ram truck it's just so aggressive i think it's really cool all right let's go over and talk about the wheels and tires that i just put on this all right, let's talk about the suspension of this power wagon because that's where it really differentiates itself from everything else because this is designed to be off-road capable. So it sits two inches taller than a standard 2500 and the suspension is not quite as stiff. Now that means we're gonna compromise some stuff because a heavy duty truck is meant to tow and have a high payload capacity. Well. The Power Wagon still has way more than my Gladiator did, uh, but it's not quite as much, but that's okay. I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of aggressive towing. I don't need to you know, throw 3,000 pounds in the back of the truck. I need this thing to hold some good weight and to perform well off-road. And so, so far it's meeting that need, but it is a little stiff on-road and off-road it's a little stiff as well. Hopefully with some new shocks, we can uh, rectify that. Now it does come with some Bilstein shocks, but I think there's some better options out there we'll be taking a look at. Now, the cool thing about the Power Wagon is you have solid axles front and rear, and I have lockers front and rear, which is gonna give me peace of mind when I'm out wheeling by myself. You know, if I get myself in a sticky situation, I could turn those lockers on, I could pull the winch if I need to, it's ready to go. It also does have the sway bar disconnect, which allows this thing to get really flexy if it needs to. So this thing is super capable. Now, what I like is we were able to put 35 inch tires on the stock suspension, no lift required, no trimming. So I've got some BFG all terrains, the KO2s. I love these tires. These are a great road tire and a good off-road tire out here in the desert. They're just perfect. And I've got them paired up to some AEV wheels, which are nice because the offset and backspacing of these wheels are almost stock. So these are not sitting way outside the fender. This is all just nice and tucked in. Uh, no rubbing at all on these. Now, I think we could do a 37, uh, but we might have to make some little bit of trimming to the inner fender liner, but we're not gonna do that just yet because here's the thing with putting 30 fives on here right now as i'm making this video there is no programmer for the 2020 power wagon hopefully somebody will come out with one here soon i know aev is working on it so i'm looking forward to that now one other thing to mention about the suspension on this truck i did mention it's two inches taller and you really notice that when you are getting in and out of the truck it's a big step to get in this thing and i've got big long legs so i will be adding some kind of power step some kind of rock slider something that I can stand on. I know my wife will definitely appreciate that, but I don't think we're gonna be doing a whole lot of lift other than, you know, maybe changing out the shocks. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the engine. Let's talk about the power and the gas mileage. So what's under the hood of the power wagon? We've got a 6.4 liter Hemi with 410 horsepower and 429 pound feet of torque. And I gotta tell you, seat of the pants, the grumble of the motor when you step on the gas, it's pretty good. Now. It's not best in class. 
you know, there are some other vehicles out there that have diesels that have got more torque and they'll definitely go faster. But for what I'm gonna be using this truck for, this is gonna meet my needs. And so I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I would like a little bit better fuel economy, but it is what it is. You know, on the freeway, drawing a Moab just a couple weeks ago, I got about 14 miles to the gallon, which isn't great, but it'll work. Um, now, putting these 35s on there is probably going to decrease my gas mileage a little bit, but because I cannot recalibrate my speedometer right now, I'm not sure what my gas mileage is, but as soon as I get that done, I will be sure to report back to you. So I'm pretty happy with this motor, especially with the 410 gears. You know, it's got great off the line, and then you put it into four low with that transfer case. It does really well off-road, so it's a good powertrain, and I did get the Mopar warranty, so I'm not worried about reliability. This thing's gonna be uh, a good long-term truck for me, I think. So let's go talk about payload capacity and towing in the rear. All right, now before I open the truck bed up and talk about payload capacity and towing rating for this vehicle, there's one little criticism here that I wanna mention, and that is these backup sensors down here. It's almost like, it's almost like they were an afterthought. You've got this nice hard steel bumper, and then you've got this plastic balance down here where they put in the backup sensors. I mean, look, if I go hit a rock, you know, this has got some big departure angle, that's going to get banged up. Something tells me that I probably need to relocate those sensors into the actual metal bumper and get rid of that plastic valance. I don't know. Not very impressed with that. Otherwise, the steel bumper back here is really nice. You got all your needs for wiring up your towing. And we are going to be doing a little bit of towing, not any heavy duty towing. And let's just talk about that for a second. Towing rating on this is just over 10,000 pounds. I don't think I'm going to be towing anything heavier than that. So it should be fine for me. There is a backup camera back here. In fact, there are cameras just about everywhere on this truck. There is a full 360 degree view when you are out on the road or out on the trail. And I got to tell you, that's a really cool feature, especially when you're in tight sections of a trail, to be able to see what's to the right of you, to the left, to the front and the rear, when you are in a big massive truck like this, that is a great option. But we'll talk more about the features inside after we, this. Now, one cool thing is, how about this? This is something my Gladiator didn't have. The press of a button and we have an automatic tailgate. Now, this bed is six feet, four inches long, and it's so wide, so much bigger than my Jeep Gladiator by far. I mean, look, I can lay down and take a nap in the back of this truck bed. And it, the payload capacity is just over 1,500 pounds, which is great. I mean, I've already thrown a bunch of gear back here, and it was really nice having this extra space. Now, there's no frills back here. There's basically some tie downs, some LED lights. You got the nice Line X back here. It's going to work perfectly for me. Now, I am going to do some kind of enclosure in here. I'm not an open truck bed kind of guy anymore. I definitely want to do something that's going to keep things enclosed, keep everything clean, keep everything safe. This is going to be a super nice truck bed once it's all finished. We're going to do some pretty cool stuff back here. All right, let's go look at all the luxury and tech on the interior. Okay, I think my son summarized it best by saying, Dad, this is the most luxurious car you've ever had. And I got to say, he's right. There is so much nice luxury inside this off-road truck, this heavy-duty truck. Very surprising to me when I got in here. I was like, wow, what a great place to spend some time on some long trips. Now, it's got some leather seats, which are very comfortable, but they are both heated and ventilated. I've never had a vehicle with ventilated seats. And let me tell you, out here in the desert, it's really nice to have. The steering wheel is also heated and all the buttons are laid out very easily. I mean, and it's got the adaptive cruise control. It's got the lane assist, which is, the lane assist is very interesting. I'd never used that before. It just gives you a little bit of a nudge if you start to drift. And when you're in this big vehicle, it doesn't take long before you're starting to drift if you're not paying close attention. So that's actually kind of a nice feature the materials inside here are good uh, the one criticism I have is everything is you know we've got all this nice little design in here you've got some nice stitching leather and then you have the shift knob for the transfer case it's just this cheap looking plastic shift knob it really seems like they could have done something that was nicer than that to make it look better with this entire interior now it does have the knob here for uh, park and drive and neutral and reverse. That took me a little bit to get used to. Uh, I'm used to just doing a manual shift like that, so that was interesting. Uh, the dash is laid out really nice. There's lots of options for all your gauges on what you want to see there. You got in each four corner, you can put transmission temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature, whatever you want. It really gives you a lot of options. 
And then there is the famous 12 inch display that comes with the Ram. Uh, it is an option. And I gotta say, I love it. It's so cool. It takes a little getting used to when you have such a massive screen, but it's very responsive. I like it. I like the fact that you can split the screen and look at different things at the same time. Uh, very cool. Uh, a lot of other nice tech in here. One of the other cool things is this is a very quiet ride compared to my Jeep especially because there are microphones in the ceiling that are noise canceling. So when you go on going down the road, it is really quiet in here. And listening to your music, well, if you're a music nut like I am, this one's equipped with the upgraded stereo system. And I gotta say, the best stereo system out of anyone I've ever heard coming off the dealership storeroom. Now, there is a ton of storage. There are cup holders. There's two different glove boxes. This center console could be a chair. Although I wouldn't want to sit here because there's not a whole lot of room for your feet, but there is storage up underneath in here, but it's a really nice armrest, but it is also a nice place to put stuff. In the back, what I really like in the back is there is a ton of room back there. You can sit back there and be totally comfortable, but if you want to put some storage back there, it's got that fold out platform that lays completely flat and allows you to put all your gear back there. There's a lot going on inside this truck and I got to tell you, it's just a great place to be on a long trip. I'm really, really liking this truck. It's growing on me quick. So now that you're familiar with my 2020 Ram Power Wagon, my son and I are gonna go hit the trails. Why don't you join us for a little while longer? Let's go see what this truck can do. Now the question that everyone keeps asking me since I bought the Ram Power Wagon, why from so many trucks did I choose this one? I did look hard at the Ford Tremor, the Raptor, the Ram Rebel, the Ram 2500, and even the new TRX. I even considered the Chevrolet HD. And each of those trucks have some great features and abilities, but when you factor in price, and the fact that I don't need to lift this truck to put 37s on it, it comes with a winch, lockers, sway bar disconnect, best in class suspension flex. This is the perfect truck at the right price point for how I intend to use it. Now, I know truck enthusiasts can debate it all day, but for me, I have no regrets with my choice and I'm looking forward to where this truck and I will adventure together. Well, that was a little tight for this big old truck, but we made it. Although I don't think we're gonna go a whole lot further down to so I'm getting... So we knew coming down Sandstone Canyon that we were gonna have some limitations just because we're so big, but I'm surprised we made it as far as we did, but we've kind of come to the end of the road for us. We just can't go any further. Things are gonna get too tight from here on out. It's been a blast.
my son and I have had a blast out here today getting to know the truck and just exploring the desert. I hope you have enjoyed riding along with us and getting a chance to see my new truck. I'm really excited about some of the upcoming adventures, some of the upgrades, just taking this to some cool places we're going to be doing and I will be sure to take you along with me on those adventures. Thanks for watching.